जेसी वी आर लाइव डॉक्टर सांगर इज हियर और डॉक्टर इज हियर एस प्राइवेट जेसी वी आर लाइव या सर नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू बाबा जेसी टॉक शो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ब्रिंगिंग आवर टाइम एंड अटेंडिंग हियर और बीइंग अ पार्ट ऑफ अस लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू माय टीम थैंक यू we have ravi ravi say hello to sir hello hello kavita hello, sir. say hi 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 manoj sheman hi hi sir hi guys so nice to have you here you have such a wonderful person to host i am telling you we'll have a great time today although meri uh, my knowledge about football is very little i like to interact with you so i got you here and our objective is very clear was that we want more and more people to get encouraged and they push their children out to play on the field looking at you by asking you questions by interacting with you i'm sure they will be convinced all the more so that they go out on the field to play i'm expecting sure. people who are in already i'm taking in taking them in hello welcome back So how are you feeling? How is celebrity doing to you? Uh, so far so good. It's been a good uh, own time, self time for the last forty plus days. So uh, I think. <laughs> I think your signal is slightly low, slightly weak. Uh, Mr. Baichung, your signal is slightly low. both audio video both went out i know it i'll just call him i think there is a connection is he connecting no not from another connection don't okay. see him in the waiting room I think your signal went off. Your signal went off. Yeah, you come in, come in with the. But try and put the same name so that we can identify you. Okay, waiting for you. Okay, while he is coming back, while he is coming back, he has some signal issues. He is right now in Siliguri. Uh, he got stuck there because of whatever we are facing now. So we should be back in two minutes. in the meantime let's talk about tomorrow what's happening tomorrow tomorrow is an interesting day we are talking about genetic disorders we have is it yeah. ant gomes no 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 he'll come in with his name okay so we have we are talking tomorrow we have genetic disorders we'll have a specialist talking about different ways of analyzing if you have a genetic disease that means taking from your parents or uh, or your father's side or mother's side the next we have day after tomorrow we have mr devang gandhi a former cricketer and he is a present selector of indian team so he is coming in on saturday i would request all of you to come back and watch him talk on cricket so you can come back asking questions whatever you want to know about cricket apart from the current selection scenarios because that's one thing he doesn't want to talk about the rest everything you can talk about so we are all in set for the next few days sunday is an interesting topic again so bolte hain how is that okay sunday is another topic we are talking about we are getting together four five doctors they will be talking about yeah baichung is here baichung is here please take him yeah yeah yes you back <laughs> can you can you hear me yes yeah. i can hear you i almost oh, had a heart attack i didn't know how to take it forward Okay, so sorry about that. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Perfect. So, Mr. Baichung, uh, we are all set. Uh, I must tell you about this format that we have. It's a format yes. where we invite eminent personalities to talk about their subjects, and we interact with them. And okay. people who are watching, they get to learn a lot from the speakers. 
like suppose uh, today's topic is football so we'll interact on this subject and we'll let them ask you questions straight away so that they get they get back some answers for their topic today's football as in giving education to their children or encouraging their family members to participate more and more in this so mm -hmm. may i request now manoj sarathi to introduce our guest of honor today okay thank you jc what an honor well who doesn't know paishun bhutia he is one celebrity no, no, no. whose posters he is one celebrity whose posters almost all of us have on our walls he certainly needs no introduction i am sorry somebody is talking can you please mute ravi okay that's okay yeah okay so he certainly needs no introduction but just to set the ball rolling oops uh, it's not ball it's football rolling i will quickly run through the glorious career that he have had so far mr baichung bhutia also known as the sikkimist sniper as a former indian national footballer and is considered as the epitome of rise of indian football he was born on 15th of december 1976 in tinkitam sikkim and played as a striker all his career mr bhutia is known for his powerful shots and his pinpoint accuracy in front of the goal his hunger for goals and his passion for the game made him the father figure of indian football he has also captained the national side and currently plays the role of manager at the sikkim state football club mr baichung was not only good at football but he also represented his school at basketball badminton and athletics he played for several other local school teams and clubs and brought attention to himself in in the year 1992 their subroto cup where he received the best players award the talent was spotted by formal indian goalkeeper bhaskar ganguly and helped mr bhutia move to west bengal where he played most of his career mr bhutia has represented the following teams team india east bengal jct meals bari mohan bagan pork fa salangar mk land and united second Mr Baichung Bhutia made his club professional debut in 1993 for, from Calcutta for the East Bengal club. His debut for the club marked the beginning of his career. He then made his international debut on 10th March 1995 against Thailand in Nehru Cup. He was just 19 years of age, mind you, at 19 years of age in the same tournament he scored a goal against Uzbekistan to become the youngest ever Indian goal scorer at the age of 19. having made his debut for the national team at just 19 years of age mr baichung showed some bright signs of helping indian football rise he went on to play some superb football for both club and country and became one of india's best ever players he scored just one goal in his debut tournament lot of disturbance i have just muted it okay okay Yeah, please continue. He scored just one goal in his debut tournament and scored his second in the same tournament two years later against Bangladesh in the finals. In the 2002 LG Cup, Mr. Bhutia netted a brace against Vietnam, helping India to a 3-2 win. He was the he was then made the captain of team for the 2005 SAF Championship. India won the championship again with Bangladesh again reaching the finals and losing to India 2-0. Mr Bhutia scored one of the goals and was part part of the two goals he scored in the tournament in 2008 edition of the tournament Mr Bhutia scored just one goal and helped India reach the finals where they unfortunately lost to Maldives 1-0 Mr Baichung won the 2008 AFC Challenge Cup and was selected as the most valuable player of the tournament with three goals Mr Bhutia's 100th cap came in 2009 in the Nehru Cup He was the first player to reach the milestone. He became the player of the tournament in spite of missing out on the finals. He has made a total of 104 appearances for the national side and scored 40 goals in competitions. Mr. Bhutia played most of his career, club career in West Bengal. He played for clubs like Mohan Bagan, East Bengal, JCT Mills, United Sikkim, and two other Malaysian clubs. In 1999, Mr. Bhutia became the first ever Indian player to sign a professional contract in Europe. when he signed for manchester bay bay side bari where he would spend 3 seasons and he made 37 appearances for them in the league in malaysia he played for pirak fa and then played for selangor mk land he scored a total of 5 goals in 13 appearances for both sides 
In his split career at East Bengal and Mohan Bagan, Mr. Bhutia scored 52 goals from 97 games and 25 goals from 57 game, 56 games, respectively. In 2012, Mr. Bhutia signed for United Sikkim. He was then made interim manager of the team in the same year, which marked his managerial debut. He currently manages the Sikkim state football team. Mr. Bhutia has had an illustrious club career that involves a massive 226 league games and a hundred goals from them. Mr. Bhutia announced his retirement from international football in 2011. A farewell match was organized for him in January 2012 against Ben Muni, the famous club. He then played his last club match at United Sikkim in 2015, which marked the end of his glorious career. He currently is a managerial, he currently is on a managerial venture at Sikkim and has founded the Baishung Bhutia Soccer School to help nurture young talents. Now, just to give you a list of a few awards and honors which he have received during his career, he had received Arjuna Award for football in 1998. He has received Padma Sri, the fourth highest civilian award in India in the year 2008. He received Banga Bhushan in 2014, Asian Football Hall of Fame inductee in 2014, IFF HS 48 Football Legion players phase one inductee in 2016. Okay, so football is not all, it's not only football when we are talking of Mr. Baichung Bhutia. He is also the winner of the reality TV show Jhalak Dikhlaja. That's all, and that's Baichung Bhutia for you. Thank you. Bapre, bap, it's like a full book. Huh? <laughs> what are you, man? Damn good. So we have one of the best guests today. Huh? Uh, just a few. Okay, fine. great. Uh, okay. Sir, how are you feeling? Very, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't remember all what you've read through. It's been a long, long time. You achieved all that, sir. You <laughs> yes. achieved all actually, that. You don't you know, remember. Actually, actually so for what we do normally, we try to look for the person who's coming on the net and create a good introduction. So that's how we did it for you. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, much, boys sir. and girls, welcome to Papa JC Talk Show. And today, our topic is football. 22 people running to kick one single ball for 90 minutes. <clears throat> yes, that's football for me. That's all I understand. Now we'll get to hear from him. What is football? And doc, I have first question to you that we have. First question straight away. With a heart to heart. Huh? The time mm -hmm. when you started football was the craze for cricket. Because Prudential Cup, 1983, after that, you came into the picture playing, learning football. How come you selected football as your sport? No, I think if you are born in Sikkim and Northeast, there's only one sport you play, that's football. And uh, obviously, when we grew up as, as a footballer, uh, and you were just saying of uh, cricket at 1983, India had just won World Cup. But, uh, you know, there was only World Cup that you could not, see much football or cricket on television and for us in Sikkim too we had no idea of this game called cricket exists as well and when India won because you know those days was no, there was no cable network the newspapers were hardly coming into you know place Sikkim was still a very small new state to India so I think television those days obviously you and I would know you know with DD how hard and difficult it was to get those network coming in, you know, go to that paddy field, rotate your antenna and get that right channel. So <laughs> those days are the thing which we've grown up, uh, you know, uh, during those days. So we never knew about much about uh, star footballers or star cricketers when we grew up as a, uh, in, in Sikkim as well. But for us, uh, the local players were our idol local stars because Sikkim was so big in football Every village you went, every town you went, people spoke, people played. There was village-level tournaments. Uh, any festival, uh, you had a tournament uh, you know, connected with that festival. So that's how the culture of football was very, very big. And uh, so that's how I started playing. Uh, that's it. Okay, awesome. So you used to play, when you, when you were playing football, you must be having that team, or your friends. So where are they now? When you started playing football that time, your childhood friends? Yes, a uh, lot of them are back in Sikkim. I, we grew up playing. We were initially, when I played, in, initially I played was under 11 
Sikkim State Championship, which we towed to Delhi, and that's how I was spotted to get scholarship from Sport Authority of India at the age of 11. And uh, from that, uh, 18 players, five of us got scholarship uh, to for football. Uh, and now, uh, you know, one of my friends, he did come and play in big clubs, Sharap Lepcha in, in Mohan Bagan, East Bengal as well. Uh, Devendra, who is also a good friend, now is back in Sikkim. Uh, there was Ambar Thapa, now he's become a sports uh, physical tra uh, trainer in Sikkim. So all, all of them are doing well. Uh, Sharap, in fact, quit football, played in big clubs uh, in Calcutta, then went back because of injury. Now he's become a general manager of one of the biggest casino in Sikkim. So <laughs> everybody settled well, but uh, we still get to meet and play football because now we've become uh, over 40s. I think when you reach 40s and you cross, there's another football team. They make it called veterans team. So we're all in veterans team now playing football. Good, good. So you have, you, it's good to know that you're connected with the childhood team, the group of yours who you started playing with and you are still playing with them. That's so nice to hear. In fact, I was just wondering in those days, how did you manage to study at the same time? When, because if I know correctly that you have to spend hours in the field, eight hours, nine hours in the field. So how do you manage to study? No, I think it's not very difficult. In fact, uh, you know, it's very important to manage your time and football or any sports, uh, you now, because it's become so professional, it's very important to train right. You know, in our generation, when we were small, say 80s, early 80s, late 80s, early 90s, you know, I won't blame the coaches as well. You know, coaches kept you in the ground for five, six hours training. But now it's about training quality, not quantity. So I think you can manage your studies as well because, you know, for a footballer, I can say is that if you're doing pre-season, because football has different, different part of the season. So if you're playing professional football, you have a pre-season, which is before the season starts. That period is, you know, you can work out four to five hours a day. But once the season starts, then you tend to cut down quite a lot. But a lot of the younger boys and girls were just in school and just started playing. I think for you guys to train is train one, two hours a day. Uh, but train quality, go, you know, go into good training centers, make sure your coaches are there, you're competing as well. But don't try and train seven, eight hours and kill yourself. Uh, but and that's where I think the parents and and the young boy or a girl who's into sports will have to make sure that the timings are followed. You have a training period, you have a study period, and uh, and so on. And that uh, when when you set that routine out, uh, you've got to dedicate it completely because when you're training on the field, everything has to go in. Just focus on your uh, your training, football or a match. And when you come back to your classes to study academics, make sure. Those are left, focus on your study. So I think it can be managed. And we've seen a lot of sports person managing that. But once you become professional at the age of 17, 18 and play with big clubs, then I think your, uh, in terms of studies, then goes a little difficult because you're touring so much, you're training so much with the team and you're traveling quite a lot playing. So then it becomes a challenge. But uh, when you're right now just playing in school, make sure that your uh, timetables are routines are fixed and you uh, properly religiously follow those timetables. Okay, talking about young boys and children, you just now mentioned, we have, I have invited a lot of school students, a lot of uh, 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 students and a lot of these football players from different clubs. Please raise your hand if you have to ask questions and queue up with your uh, names up here so that we can put you straight with uh, Mr. Baichung Bhutia here. And in the meanwhile, you can also ask your questions on the chat. It's an interactive session. Feel free to ask anything you want to ask because he's here to answer most of your questions. So please raise your hands if you have to ask a question. Okay, going back to this uh, topic on football, uh, we all know that as a child, the first toy that we kick is a ball. So yes. what is the right age for a child to start playing or when should he be given the coaching as the first stage? I think there's no particular age for a child to start training and playing. I think, uh, you know, it's important how you train the child is very, very important. And in fact, uh, I am now looking at, uh, you know, uh, coming up with a football training app for the parents as well. And also for the kids who are playing. 
and this uh, this is going to be simple training a uh, basic one how do you start training from age 2 to onwards to 3 onwards till the age you know you become professional players and basic training stuff which i want to educate parents as well you know if you don't have the facilities to even go out you can easily train within a small room inside as well so trying to come up with that program to really teach and uh, i think you don't require any age it's just that how you handle the kid when you start training the most important with the kids right now below the age of say maybe 12 or 13 or 14 is they need to enjoy playing that's the most important thing but uh, right now because our parents as a parent as coaches we tend to become too demanding and try and push it too much that could really kill away the interest of the sport for the child because football is quite a tough game you need fitness for a lot physical thing but how do you integrate that you know training to be more fun and enjoyable is very very important for for anybody training kids or coaches or fathers training the kids so it's all basic kind of training the kids should enjoy at that age to play it should not be that you know he's or the ground he's got a training in the evening and he's not wanting to go for the training because he's already thinking he has to do this that this and he's not enjoying at all so every evening every night before the kids any kids who are trying to become footballer is sleeping they need to think that tomorrow morning when it's going to be morning i want to just get out of the house go to the ground and play that interest should come within from the kid whether whatever age it is and if you can have that kind of training set then that's how i think he's going to develop into a good footballer but uh, again as i said you know i've trained under a lot of coaches sometimes even i have felt you know like uh, do i really want to play football do i want to really do this because you don't tend to enjoy with lot of uh, coaches when you're forced to do lot of things which is not benefiting your professional or your footballing as a player as well uh, but you're just not enjoying the game as well so that balance is very very important having known you i mean i was just thinking while you were talking i just remember the first time i met you in 2002 you're still the same is it because you are a sports person or it's because of i don't know what i mean because from from people in sikkim look so young or what even at no, your age you look so young next next time i'm going to come get a beard like you and come back and be different <laughs> <laughs> i think you don't uh, you you I, i don't see anybody trying to change what, what there's nothing difficult you just no no you look actually you look very young i mean if given a chance the ball is there you start playing with it right away <laughs> okay we have the first hand raise i am unmuting swaraj patra ji you can straight away ask your question Mr Swaraj yeah hi hey, hello how are you first tell me how old are you i'm um, 13 13 which school are you from i'm from dps river park kolkata oh awesome and you play cricket uh, no. football, sorry. yeah awesome awesome so we have the first fan here uh, this is for you straight straight a question for you sir uh yes. bhai jing sir very good afternoon good this afternoon. is swaraj from dps river park kolkata So, I have a very common question which people ask to like. It's a very frequently asked question, sir. So, in this nation, in a nation like India, where people are, people do love a, like a, like love football a lot. They have like really good passion for football. But we see that most of the people are indulged in some or the other way to the cricket. Okay, sir. And after, even after that, there are some children who like read like me and. Many of the young boys who want to pursue a career in it and become the next Bhai Chung Bhutia, sir. Obviously. Any advice for them? Like any piece of advice for? No, I think uh, you know football now in India is one of the fastest growing sports for all the young Definitely. young generation. So if you look at if you look at below sixteen years today, I think in India many kids I think does play football rather than other sports, including cricket. It's developing, well. and that is that is the data which. lot of the television the sports channels have given uh, because football is i think it's it's a global sport first of all and yes. i think today if you look at uh, you know global leaders global global name brand global icons you will only find a uh, few great leaders but it will be mostly it'll be footballers today look at if you look at david beckham lionel messi cristiano ronaldo all across the world they would know them 
you know because yeah. it's such a global sport everybody is playing every country is playing so the competition level obviously is very very challenging and difficult i'm not trying to demean cricket but cricket is played by only few countries which is 5 6 so for india it is it benefits because you're only playing with 6 7 countries repeating you know playing that and you're seen lot on the television and then you become world champions then people try and connect with you know that's particular sport especially cricket when you become world champions playing that with football it becomes very difficult to because it's very very competitive but what is good is now football obviously good or bad you you get to see world football on television you get to see you know european premier league the champions league you've got icons messi ronaldo including indian stars sunil chetri jj so i think you've got a lot of choice so kids are obviously you know playing the sport so hopefully i think uh, with creating that culture um, obviously it's challenge it's quite uh, quite a big challenge because i think you still need to do quite a lot in terms of getting people like you guys to come out play make sure that you get properly trained make sure that just not train you are also competing in this uh, in this age group so that is where we need to work because i i'm sure for you right now you might not be able to play many matches i think you must be playing only inter school matches are you playing any other matches apart from your inter school uh, no not really like from a club from the german football academy sometimes uh, so just you know once a week you, know, you might be so we need to make sure that you're competing quite a lot in good level as well because you know you have to progress as a player and to popularize the sport at that your grassroots level is not just not coaching as well it's coaching is very important but competing with with your age group uh, is very very important and i think that we've not been able to do as much we want to because obviously we do lack infrastructure we don't get grounds easily to for kids to go and you know train and play so that's been one challenge but i think slowly it's really picked up and to, uh whether india plays world cup or doesn't play i think football is the going to be the most uh, watched and played sports for the kids in future thank you sir are you satisfied uh yes sir Absolutely. you have any more questions to ask uh sir i'll catch on good good thank you for coming in and keep connected huh? we yes, have yugan shagarwal and can you please mute yourself beta we have yugan shagarwal i am unmuting you uh hello uh good, uh good afternoon uh my name is yuganj and i actually study in the uk i'm doing football management in the uk at the university level so yeah good afternoon uh sir and good afternoon Hi. everyone good afternoon yuganj yeah i just have one question i'm actually uh doing football management in the uk so like i actually coach and i scout in the uk as well and in india so i just have one question like regarding the recent rule proposal you know like where ISL have been asked to limit the number of foreigners from six to six plus one to three plus one for from the next season, but and they talk about you know how it would help Indian talent and like young players to give them experience and you know help them become like good followers in the country itself because more foreigners are obviously you know limiting the number of Indian players at the same time. But I just wanted your views on it because you know like people talk about exposure and experience so. if you have that exposure of playing with those foreign players who have obviously like i'm not demeaning indian football but as you know the standards of european football or from brazil are way higher than that as of indian football so wouldn't it help indian talent in a way rather than actually limiting them so i just wanted your view on that see i think uh, in today's news there is already with i league at least not the isl with i league coming down to 3 plus 1 foreigner that is four foreigners playing yeah. i think which is a great move for i league for isl i think they have still not yet decided but uh, yes i think it's very important to have foreigners playing in in your league uh, and you doing um, you doing sports football management sports management in uk if you look at lot of clubs in europe as well especially premier league you have lot of foreigners playing yeah. in, in in the clubs you know you'll have very few out of 11 players on the field you'll have three players from in english yeah. english uh, you know team that's playing so you bound to have your it's important to have foreigners on the league but at the same time i think you've got to manage it but for me more than that i think right now for india to really if you've got to improve the indian players it is that age group in that grassroots level the number of matches has to increase yeah. i think that is where we need to start developing 
once you're playing isl yes if you're playing with good uh, foreigners or whether you're playing in isl tournament with even 3 or 6 uh, the player obviously would benefit would also get that experience playing that league but if you've not really got proper comp- competitive matches and training and proper guidance there and being nurtured from the grassroots then i think that is where you're going to lose out quite a lot so for yeah. me right now important thing is get more matches get more competition uh, at the grassroots level and that doesn't yeah. need to be all india level that needs to be like you are in calcutta right now your area within that area if you have a small lawn in your uh, housing complex get a 10 team within that complex to play five a side make sure that kids are playing every weekend that five a side tournament you know street football is one of the best football for kids to start picking up to become great players and if you look at the best players in the world over the years are all from south america and they've all played street football and it's important you know the small small tournament small small street side five a side four a side within that complex within that locality should happen and calcutta used to have so many of this para footballs you know when we first initially came that is died down quite a lot yeah. and this is very important uh, for you know kids to play around compete uh, yes isl obviously i think right now we should have uh, more numbers of foreigners what they have right now is the perfect numbers uh, because uh, we need good quality league as well because if you take out all the foreigners then your league quality does not become good then people don't want to watch yeah. and once people don't watch it then it suffers in terms of marketing the channels don't want to show it the people don't want to come to the stadium then you lose out that and that affects at the end you know the football on the whole so your standard has to be maintained because tomorrow if you don't have good quality players like uh, cristiano ronaldo not playing in italian league or messi not playing in spanish league then the league itself might come down and people yeah. might not want to enjoy it. so you've got to balance that very well it's important yeah thank you Are you satisfied, Yuvansh? Oh yeah. Uh, I just have one follow-up question, if that's possible. Please, please, please. Yeah. Uh, as you said, regarding like uh, grassroots is like very important. You know, like even I agree definitely because if you look like in the UK especially, they start with the grassroots, like pre academy from the age of six and seven. And in India, even though it has started in the recent years, you know, like it's not at the same level as compared. So how would like as you said, like you have your own school, like the Bajang Bhutia Football School, and that's a really great initiative all around the country to help kids get into football and train them. And so, how would you like say, like you know, like as from a professional point of view, like how can clubs support like grassroots football? Because many of the ISL clubs I you see, like they like they do not focus a lot on grassroots. It's more about just the first team and like you know getting the money in and stuff. So. See, uh, you've been in England. I don't know how many years you've been there. You know, I played there as well. Yeah. Now, if you look at England, I played in a club called Bury, which is in Manchester. Yeah. Now, within that radius of five kilometers to ten kilometers, we had around ten to fifteen clubs playing in high level, highest level. Yeah. You know, when I uh, when I was in Bury, five minutes drive, you have Bolton Wanderers Stadium. You have ten minutes drive, you have got Old Trafford, and then another ten minutes drive, you've got Manchester City. You've got uh, Blackburn Rovers there. So. you know there are a lot of another second division third division clubs uh, premier league clubs playing which is all surrounded all these clubs have got age group teams you know there's under 13 under 15 under 16 and surprisingly all these kids every weekend the clubs go and compete within that area because where where i came from is lancashire yeah. so within that they have a league lancashire league within man u man city bolton bury all these professional clubs second division third division uh, premier league that age group they don't really separate so they have that competition play so the kids are competing with you know some of the best best clubs and best players within themselves so that development starts and and they're training as well when they're not uh, sunday they play but monday thursday monday wednesday friday they come and train in, in the club so that system is properly organized and i think that is where in india it's a big Uh, country we can't do it in in the club level but what we can do it is within the locality level and for that i think uh, it needs interest from the parents it needs interest from the locality as well uh, and manipur is got that bit of system kolkata yeah. used to have that kind of system quite a bit because if you go to paras they have this coaching clubs in paras so this 
a club in those para so those club organizes lot of this para football tournament and uh, you know that but we need to get it more structured make sure that kids are playing every weekend and also getting trained yeah so that's how yeah. we need to progress are you happy you guys yeah thank you so much thank you keep coming back huh? now yes, i'm unmuting sure. uh, mr supreme mukherjee in the meanwhile uh, uh, sari ji are you ready with questions manoj pasari ji are you there yes sir i have a few on the chat box acha just give me two minutes i'll i am unmuting okay. supreme mukherjee supreme. Yes, right. mr mukherjee are you there yes i'm there very much there hi bhai how are you good good supreme how are you i'm good man good to see you after so long and good to see you titan as well how are you doing yes, thank you i'm i'm doing good so can you put beard up huh? sorry even you grow beard फंक्शनिंग टूगेदर कैन यू वन ऑफ दैम Yeah, I took Ariman to Goa, by Chong. Yes. Met uh, Brahmanand sir there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Brahmanand sir saw him play. He uh, he made him play with uh, Sesa team also. He was very impressed. He said that you know your boy will play for India one day and blah blah blah. So he came back and he put across to Ranjan Chaudhary. You know Ranjan Chaudhary very well. Yes. Now tell me, I mean. What what is the way ahead for Ariman from here? I mean, I spoke to Ranjan sir, and he said that he wanted to go and meet him uh, at the Samalgati Stadium. But then, uh, you know, the lockdown thing started. So what? <coughs> Hello. Can you hear? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. <coughs> so uh, it it's a very difficult to advise because you know it, it's and it's in a very difficult situation as well now what i would suggest is hmm obviously i have not seen him play so it, it becomes one of the thing is very difficult for me to really say he should carry on being professional player he should focus on something else which uh, i have not seen now obviously for arman to really he wants to make it into football uh mm. he should be right now because i'm sure now he must be 18 i know he is 16 plus 16 plus mm ah so 16 plus for him right now it's very important that he needs to get into one of the clubs because lot of clubs are under 17 team he has to get into a team which has under 17 team that plays tournament now if that is he's trying to make it a professional Uh, into professional thing but that doesn't mean that if he does not make into under 17 team also that's end for him because a lot of players have gone on to play for india after reaching 25 26 one of the biggest example is i think from shillong this guy uh he was playing with bangalore fc he was doing his university uh, in bangalore and uh, that's how he went on to play uh but important thing is he has to get into the team he has to start playing with him so that he starts competing uh so you know brahmanand this seen him and says he's a good player i think you should trust that as well uh if he can get into east bengal because uh, i think ranjan choudhary is training in east bengal he's the coach there so arman will have to now keep trying to work with the east bengal team keep training but at the same time obviously as a father you would not want him to miss his studies Uh, and he'll have to balance that somehow or the other. That he will have to find the way out to balance. But the important thing is, he'll have to get into one of the clubs, start playing with with the team. They're traveling around because if you start playing under 17 with East Bengal, they play I League. They play all the major tournament. You would be you would be spotted. Then gets into India team or a Bengal team, sub junior nationals or a junior nationals. Uh, that's the step you need to take it. And uh, and 
you should not give up it's it's very very challenging because uh, you are in what situation and i'm in same situation as well uh, you know i want my son to play football uh, obviously he does take interest but he's not as passionate as arman what i've seen and spoken to him as well uh and obviously the mother does not want him to really go into football because she thinks studies is important because whether he's going to make it or not so i've given him a chance this year to go into biking with the football academy my son that i'm talking about and let's see two years how he enjoys uh okay. and uh, we as a parent we don't want you know at the end when you become old the son at 30s 40s because if you i could not become professional footballer and play for <laughs> india you should want to hear that uh, and which is a very bad thing because you need to give them that opportunity and which i think you're doing a great thing by giving him the opportunity but now i think at the end of the day it's his hard work and talent uh, that has to pay off you can only help him guide him and support him but he'll also yeah, have right. to start performing it now so right. uh, that's where i think he'll have to work first get into keep going keep getting into you know teams or training with teams let him keep training in different uh, centers if not in east bengal any other club and uh, and that's how i think we'll have to start okay excellent avin maas bhai itna itna acche se samjha diya supreme sahab aapko to in fact <laughs> in fact uh, the supreme we have i am also starting we've already started residential academy with biking but we are biking the football academy which okay which gives, one which Where? gives education we've got one in gurgaon one in kerala in kochi but okay. in next one year's time i'm going to start a similar academy which also with one of the good school so our tie up with academy is we tie up with school so they get into the residential academy but day time they go into this you know school academics uh, and we make sure that they're not missing out on academics plus football so we are we hopefully coming something similar in siliguri with a okay. good school so that uh, they get to compete in all the highest league which is happening obviously he'll have to get into the team first uh, and then at the same time he's not missing his studies so which is i think a great great thing so hopefully in, in one one and a half years time We'll start a residential academy in Silguri as well. So, okay. when, what are you looking for then? When you start, when you just mentioned about starting an academy in schools, what exactly do you look as a parameter? They should have a big field or uh... the schools. The school should have a good infrastructure for football. Uh, they need to provide good residential facilities because a lot of the schools anyway have hostels, so boarding, boarding. So they need to provide us the boarding. We obviously would pay the school the boarding facilities, the ground facilities, everything. Uh, but uh, you know that particular school and particular for that center academy we tend to give obviously train them uh, get good coaches to train them and also make sure that there is a team participating in all the major tournament that's happening across the country so that the players get that opportunity to showcase that talent so that platform is there at the same time you'll obviously go through good coaching program as well uh, and then you're studying as well so you're going to a good uh, you know cbsc and icsc school so you're not missing out on education so is it that you want to do it with one particular school or you can do it at large with many schools in calcutta because calcutta has a lot of such schools a okay. lot of schools a lot of schools tend to want exclusivity so that uh, you know once you tie up then they don't want something coming nearby so uh, calcutta i have not really thought about it but we would definitely would think in future but silguri i think is 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 a good place i felt to start because uh, uh, now silguri has become an educational hub with a lot of good schools coming and also because uh, yeah you can't match calcutta but silguri is also a good sports football culture town uh, because okay. the team which once you get into that residential academy of mine you have lot of good teams clubs in around silguri darjeeling sikkim korshan kalimpong doors for this kids to have enough good competitive matches to play and that is very very important i can't do a residential academy in a place like say gujarat because you might not get the team uh, to compete there because my residential team they need to play matches every week but you would not get another team to compete uh, there might not be many tournaments in that so you also should look into the uh, region where the football culture is big and there's talent there then slowly you know we can spread across i have one suggestion here i mean i was just thinking loudly mr M- mr supreme mukherjee are you done with your question or you want to ask something else also no 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 i'm done thank you by so much thank you jitendra for letting me 
you know oh, come on yaar you more than welcome okay but uh, uh, sir i have one uh, thing i was just thinking loudly since you mentioned about this uh, distant coaching from your some place and centralized coaching you could consider doing this uh, through video cameras and watch the players play and then pick up the best player from there and you can you can you know actually groom them or you can take them out of there and put them into this national circuit I mean, this is something which you could do in a very big way if you consider doing it all over india instead of sticking to just one place if you can just monitor it on a large screen they are playing and you watching the matches and you train them through a particular system this can be done i think now that we have come to a stage where this will be the future so no, it is it is true but uh, initially to really look through, watch them on on the digital platform is okay to select them but after that i think presence seeing physically on the ground is very very important uh, the camera does not really work then no i understand so, but you still think about it i am suggesting something very interesting if you so can start that's why i think that's why i'm trying to come up with a app digital platform where the training and coaching for a lot of these footballers especially to start the startup uh, to become a player from the age 2 3 onwards so that uh, coaching method which hopefully i should come up it's brilliant would you like to share this app details so that people can connect i'm just i'm just starting i've just thought about it so hopefully it it should be it might take two two months but uh, would you like to share easier. some number some number or something that you want people to connect with you because eventually we want everyone to get to you and take take the coaching from you yeah so hopefully i think once it's ready uh, you know i, I need to i need to talk with a lot of digital platform people uh, app people to see how we can create this but i think it's very very important because now with lockdown with corona thing a uh, lot of kids might not be able to go to ground regularly as much as possible but uh, you know there are a lot of training which you can do just within within your room as well uh, exactly. and this is just the start start starting process of of football basic uh, training program so exactly. i think that 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 would help manoj pasari ji have you got some questions lined up for him yes sir yes sir yeah please so what i have done you know i have tried tabulating the questions in the form of a rapid fire so yes. mr bhuti are you ready for this rapid fire yes yes please okay so if you don't want to answer you can skip it they not no, none no. of them is controversial one your no, favorite no. footballer it will be the it rapid keeps, fire it keeps changing from year to year with world cup to world cup but currently right now is messi okay your favorite cricketer uh ms dhoni okay your favorite sport other than soccer uh motor sports to watch badminton and tennis to play okay and your favorite bollywood actress uh No, not I've not seen I'm not a big Bollywood person, so the actors I'm not they don't have much role any apart from dancing. So there's nobody who I would say. Are you trying yeah, to skip like this to avoid controversy? Not exactly. I think. <laughs> okay. So was, was Madhuri by chance uh, actor? Too? Actor would be actor would be Amir Khan and Anbir Kapoor. Okay. One thing you do after a good performance. go and get performance a on the okay your favorite epl players epl players mm, or oh, i would say harry kane sterling few of them quite a few of them but uh, i support arsenal so right now arsenal is not performed so much so Okay, last but not the least of the rapid fire, which I am sure is at the back of the mind of a lot of others too. How far do you think is India from qualifying for FIFA World Cup? I wish I could give you the data number. I can't give you, so it's uh, hopefully it's not very far. I would want to say that it, hopefully it's not very far, but I can't tell you which date, when, what year they are going to play. But the good thing is, good news is that FIFA is increasing the number of teams in the World Cup, so the Asian quota is going to go from four to eight. Then I think we still have a good, fairly good chance to qualify. Lovely. We would love to see India playing or qualifying for FIFA World Cup at least. Thank you. Okay. Thank now you one know. question from the yeah, chat yeah. box. Yeah. 
Uh, this is from Mr. Mayank Modi. I would like to ask a question with the lockdown imposed. Kids don't go out to practice. What are the few things that footballers can do to train at home if they don't have a ground there? One of, one of the most important things is yoga. Uh, I think just the normal Surya Namaskar, which I have also just learned, learned during this lockdown, is very, very helpful. Uh, that's why I think there are a lot of things you can do in, in just inside the room as well for the kids to you know, uh, start training to be a good footballer. Uh, obviously, for that, it's very difficult to just explain it, but uh, there are a lot of training methods which you can do it. But uh, I think right now, if they can do yoga, do Pilates, do work on your uh, core muscles, work on your leg strength, so those exercises you can do. But, uh, uh, Baichung, don't you think it's very difficult to pursue these young kids to do things like yogas and all, you know, something, could shortcut types, you know, for them, which they can manage? No, I, think, I, think, I think that's where it's important that, uh, you know, you do it very short, make it very, uh, obviously, try and not make it a long session. Uh, okay. Even Surya Namaskar, you can just do it for 5-10 minutes. There are, you know, different kinds of it. So... The basic one, if you can start doing it for just 10 minutes as well, which I'm sure they can do it. Oh, thank you. So we have one, we had one question from Yash Kapoor. He's from Lamats for Boys. But this question have already been taken, I presume. But I'm just reading out the question for his satisfaction. If someone wants to pursue football in future, how do you think one should plan and go about it? You've already answered that, you know. Take okay. the para football. Uh, Manoj, can I request Yash, Yash Kapoor to please come here online? We can unmute him. Yeah, he can always. Let him directly ask online. this question. I know he's from Lamarty for Boys. So, Yash Kapoor, no, he's not there. He's not there. He yeah. hasn't raised there. But he's we have a few raised hands. Yash, you are unmuted, but I ask. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Uh, hello, sir. I'm Yash Kapoor here from Lamarty for Boys, Calcutta. So, so uh, I have a question. So, if someone wants to pursue football in the future, how do you think one should plan and go about it? And is there a specific age? Uh, for example, I can't go into football after uh, football after 16 or after 18. Or is it necessary that I need to start at the grassroots level? So yes, I think uh, you know it's if, if you are 18 and you've not still or a 16 and you're passing out class 12 and you've not still been selected for a school football team then i think your career in a football as a professional player is not too bright then obviously you should still play because it gives you fit it teaches you way of life because, because football is just not only about being professional player it also teaches you way of life in in life because it helps you after after your uh, you know when you grow up and to, on your own doing a lot of other things. So you'll have to really judge yourself. Uh, by the time you're doing your ISC or, or class 12 and you're not getting into the school team, then I don't see you can think of really pushing it too hard to make a career out of being a footballer. Uh, that's one. Uh, but uh, right now, if you're looking at becoming uh, a footballer is first thing is to start by playing in the inter-school football tournament and how I did it exactly. You know, I just started playing only in school. We played inter-house department. From inter-house, got into school team. From school team, went on to play inter-school in the state and then went on to play Subroto. Uh, from inter-school in the state, I got picked, in, uh, picked up in under-16 uh, state Sikkim team. I got also a uh, chance to play in Subroto because as our school won the Subroto tournament from Sikkim. That's how you start getting your platforms there. And if you're talented, to so think people will definitely notice and get, uh, you know, pick you. So that's how you got to start playing and picking it up. Uh, and uh, if you can get into clubs, obviously nothing like it. Uh, any clubs in Calcutta who's got good structure, football structure, uh, if you can get into good football schools or academy, is even better because your platform becomes much more. Uh, the chances to, for you to get notice is going to be more. Uh, so those are the challenges. Okay. So and right now I'm 16. I'm currently playing in the school team. So do you, after this lockdown ends, how do you think I should take a step in if I want to pursue football? So, uh, so you finish class 12 after this, yeah? Yes, sir. 
so uh, you can still go to your college but you can get into the teams as i said it's important for you to get into teams now but once you finish um, class 12 and 16 it's very important you find a club to train with or a local team to train with that's very very important because and that local team has to play local tournaments and uh, through tournaments people get spotted and through local club you get to train play with team because football at the end, end of the day is about team game so you can also train on your own with two three guys every day it's important that you need to start training with the team where you can still train until the age of 16 on your own but after 16 after 12 you've got to start playing with a team because at the end football is all about team game and you need to find a local club to start training and playing okay sir thank you so much next uh, next in line we have bihan halda are you comfortable mr bhuti are you comfortable yes yes because too many questions you are answering you're okay na yeah, yeah. <laughs> and these children they like to they treat you as the god of indian football so they have to get to you now <laughs> so yeah. i have just unmuted mr bihan halda hello okay hi bihan yes please uh good afternoon i am bihan haldar from delhi public school ruby park kolkata my question is that does the lack of good coaches player play an important role in the failure of india in indian in international football it it does play a important role because football is also to do with lot of tactical uh and uh, your your because it's a team sport so your tactical knowledge and tactical uh, things are very very important so if you don't have a coach with tactical knowledge uh, a leader who can you know control the team can say that this is how we want to play this is how we defend this is how we attack but been able to implement that on the ground train them accordingly make them understand what he is trying to so if you don't have a good coach with not much of knowledge on that then the players who are going inside the ground don't tend to understand that system then everybody is playing on their own that does not really help as a team game it's like you know football is like a machine of a car all the parts work together the car runs better so it's like that so you need to have every small to big the machines in that car to gel work properly for the car to run smoothly and it's the same thing for football team to succeed every player has to contribute work as a team and that's how the success comes in so uh, the coaches make a big big difference i'm not saying that uh, you know i've played under a lot of bad coaches that have went on to win tournaments and i've played under a lot of good coaches that have not won tournaments but uh, for for any team to succeed uh, there are two two things for a team to succeed good players and a good coach and uh, that will get you good success thank you bihan i am unmuting ajay mr ajay bhattacharya good afternoon bhai chung sir good afternoon uh, i am um, ajay bhattacharya from delhi public school ruby park i am the activity coordinator so i look after all the uh, co curricular activities right. okay so uh, i have a i am a great fan of yours sir and i i've been uh, watching you playing football since you uh, you know joined the professional club i, I have a, a one question i have two questions one is follow up question uh, do you think today what india is so so much successful uh, you know in world cricket right it's a name to reckon in and and they follow a system which is that is a, a ranji system or a plate level and a zonal level which you are talking about that we need to go to the grassroots so uh, can we have can we have that small levels uh, you know zonal levels or micro level championships which is organized by uh, you know the local authority which is affiliated to the central so that we can get those people and we can get a pool of players and we can also make through the you know world championships uh, like we used to do it uh, before this is one question and second question just let I'm, me answer let me answer this first one first 
Okay, sir. See, I think that is an ideal way to do it. Uh, and this is what how you really get a lot of players and pool of talent coming out. But what challenges you face is a lot of the local organization uh, for to do football or any other sports is a challenge because they need grounds, they need a little bit of money to really do the tournament. For cricket, it's very simple because they've got money. It's very, very easy to organize local level. You know, today, Sikkim Cricket Association gets... 15 crore a year. Imagine, you know, a Sikkim Football Association that is produced 10 players that no, I think six players that have gone on to play India in different age group. We get 10 lakh in 10 years, Sikkim Football Association, whereas Cricket Association gets 15 CR in one year. So to organize things for cricket is going to be much more easy because they have the revenue and sources to do it. But football, that way, it's also a challenge. Yes. So, you know, that is, ideally, it should be that way. But at the same time, I think if you look at uh, even cricket with that revenue and infrastructure, today, look at the biggest brand cricketers in India. Have they come through any system? No. Did yes. Dhoni come through any club uh, club structure? No. I don't know about Virat Kohli. Is he come through club structure? I don't know. Look at world biggest players today. Messi has come through a club structure. Yes, sir. Look at David Beckham. He's come through a club structure. Ryan Giggs' club structure. So it's an organized sector in Europe. Obviously, in India, because of a lot of challenges, revenue-wise, infrastructure-wise, it becomes difficult. But uh, yes. I think uh, that is not a major issue. I think what we need to do is create a nice football culture. And that we need to learn it learn from South America. Absolutely. South America does not have revenue as yes. such as European countries. They don't have ground, they don't have fields, they don't have money. Obviously, other associations have a little bit uh, more money than Indian football associations or federations. But the culture is very, very big. Every kid that goes around in locality is playing. The lo lo locality people are organizing matches, five-a-side, two-a-side, eleven-a-side. Kids are competing, playing, and they've seen that culture across. So that makes it more, of, uh, you know, kids get more passionately involved. So that has to come in. Today in India, sadly, if you look at the data, you know, 10 crores of kids, 10 crores kids play cricket. After that, we get 11 good world players. Today, you go to Australia and New Zealand, it's only 100 kids play cricket, but they still produce 100 world top players. For India, 10 crores played. For India, you have 10 crores kids playing, you produce 111 top world. But in Australia, 100 kids play, see the ratio. So the quality is also important because, you know, if you look at it, the quality, how they're trained, how they're managed is also one of the factors there. Sir, one more question. Uh, once a kid asked me uh, that uh, we used to qualify for Olympics before, right? We, uh, we used to do very well in the international stages. I'm talking about way back, you know, in the 60s, 70s. So why we are not doing is the football become competitive or it was less competitive that time? See, uh, those days, Olympics, you don't need to qualify. You yes. know, you were invited to go into it. So you get that opportunity to play. And football was not, it wasn't a global sport those days. Okay. Those days, India's World Cup story, everybody says, says that India did not go to play World Cup because of barefoot. They did not wear football shoes, which is completely not true at all. Obviously, they did not wear football shoes different. Those days, in those era, 50s and 60s, Olympics was much, much bigger than FIFA World Cup. Yes. Sir. Today, a footballer, you ask him, you want to play FIFA World Cup or you want to go to Olympics? Messi will say, I'm going to play FIFA World Cup, not Olympics. Given an option, I'm seeing. Huh? Absolutely. Those days, players were given an option. You want to go to World Cup or Olympics? They would say Olympics because Olympics was much bigger those days. FIFA World Cup wasn't. Not many countries were playing FIFA World Cup then. So there were different uh, scenarios. Now football is changed. Obviously, countries now spend 100 times more than what India spends. Look at countries around us. You know, Nepal is the number one sport. Maldives, number one sport. Bangladesh, it used to be number one sport. Obviously, cricket is come there. Um, look at uh, Malaysia, Singapore. Look at Gulf countries. The amount of money they spend for football is 100,000 times more than India. So it's, it's a very challenging and very competitive sport right now. So it becomes more difficult as a country to qualify because you've got only four spots from India to play for the World Cup. And you have Australia playing in Asia. 
that becomes very very difficult and you have china which is one of the biggest spender in football market today uh, than any european clubs or a country is still not playing world cup so yes, imagine sir. you know we will we'll have to really work hard for that thank you very much sir thank you very much thank you uh, you guys you are back you want to ask are you comfortable now mr bhuti are you comfortable yeah yes yes good 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 I am unmuting you, Ganesh, once again. Uh, hello, uh, thank you again. Uh, this is actually like a two-part question regarding like a development and stuff of Indian football. But the first being like given uh, you know like ISL, the structure of the ISL is more like the franchise system, like similar to the MLS in the US, while the I League is more like a traditional European with promotion and relegation. But do you think like? the i the structure of the i league is more benefit like more suitable and beneficial for indian football in the future given that more teams get to participate increasing exposure rather than an mls franchise which is more run by money and revenue because in the end you pay a franchise fee and if you don't have the money you don't pay in the isl because that's pretty much what many of the clubs are having a problem right now you know so do you think like what do you think like is the structure of the i league would be more beneficial towards in the future or the structure of the isl See, I think in long term, obviously, I League structure is going to benefit Indian football. I feel because you need to have promotion and relegation. Yes, um, I think we also need the entright ISL format, which is the franchise system, and which uh, I don't know how the success rate of uh, in terms of revenue. Uh, I would not be able to comment on that, but uh, I think it's it it was good that ISL happened the way it happened. and now i'm sure for even isl also to now grow they might have to you need to also always keep trying new options so if isl feels that by doing franchise system the league is not move forward the indian football is not move forward uh, and that they'll have to analyze themselves then they'll have to think of some other option so then the option is maybe we go into relegation and promotion uh, kind of structure so i definitely feel it's important uh, for a country like india you need to have a relegation promotion system because um, i feel that isl did try out with the franchise system so far uh, and now it's time for them in next couple of years i'm not saying immediately next year yeah. but in next couple of years uh, they'll have to really plan it out for the future and look into getting into relegation promotion because uh, i think there are a lot of clubs especially in smaller towns in 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 india where uh, you know the clubs uh, want to play the league second division third division but they also have an ambition to reach the top league top uh, league which is isl so if they don't get to it then then the encouragement doesn't come and then that's yeah. where i think football could get to <coughs> yeah uh, thank you just uh... for the second sorry uh for the second part of my question was like you know like in comparison to south america or the us or europe you have like a proper organized scouting structure within every club you know like from scouts from academy scouts to professional scouts watching and you have a an analysis performance analysis team doing data in the side by side but at the same time like i was recently doing an internship with fc goa like last summer and i saw like only two people do, like literally handling the whole scouting operation of all like especially in a country as big as india and obviously that reduces your visibility for like the best talent because right now it's like as you said you know like the almost best the best talent in india mostly come from the northeast because the culture of northeast is only football while the rest of india is more cricket badminton tennis and other sports so how would you recommend to increase that visibility of scouting like they are not just like the northeast because even in the end like even right now like with players coming in like amarjit singh kia man narendra garot all lit, like come from one club which is indian arrows you know yeah. and even they've picked up from the northeast or the punjab side so how would you give their visibility for scouts see i think uh, first of all the federation will have to come up with a system to protect these young players and from what origin from which uh, structure where they've come from which smaller uh, academies clubs that come so those clubs and academies will have to be protected once you have a players who are going to be your asset in terms of just not playing on the field and performance but also your revenue asset today you know it, it's like a real estate you buy a plot of land and that's your asset it goes up 
and you want to keep that plot of land and when you want to sell you need money you sell it off uh, in a in a profit thing so and that you've got in europe and, and the rest, uh, rest of the uh, rest of the world that culture for players becoming an asset is a big thing so in india we'll have to create that players becoming an asset where it's also uh, you have a uh, uh, buying and selling which obviously it started in india as well but it has to come more aggressively uh, so once you have players and assets so once you invest in a young talent groom him to become a great player the club should be able to sell him and create revenue that once comes in then entire club starts taking it very seriously in europe today uh, you know people focus on talent raw talent to get spotted and once you see a young 11 year old 10 year old 12 year old talented every club from big clubs to small club is trying to get him to their yeah. club because that's the asset for him you know you you look at example of manchester united players like ryan giggs david beckham paul scholes neville brothers these guys were bought in the club at the age of 11 12 they saw the talent picked it up brought to the club they trained these players into a good players at the age of 18 they started playing for the first team man united and today you spend say what 1 million on david beckham from the age 12 11 10 12 till the age of 24 25 and then you sell it up to real madrid at 25 million you're making a huge revenue apart from revenues it's not that david beckham is played for the club given you trophies sold your jerseys all across the world made a brand so that is what we need to bring into indian culture so once you have those players at the age of 11 12 as their asset which is going to you know bring revenue and also deliver results for your club then players tend to work and that culture i think still is not coming quite seriously mm-hmm. now i think with isl uh, they have started because isl does not have lot of isl does not have good serious academies so they are starting to uh, you know get players from i league and second division and you know try to trying to buy them out in fact um, look at us today by chungbutia football school we've got eight players that went on to play for india in different age group but what have we by we not looking at at the end right now benefiting anything but if suppose we were a club today and that eight club eight players went on to play for india and then somebody takes my players for no money which i don't get any revenue out of it then i would not be encouraged to really start doing the grassroots seriously because i bring a guy of 14 year old 15 year old train him three years to become one of the best footballers and tomorrow uh, atk takes him for no money so where are all my hard work that is gone so that is been happening so we need to protect those kind of situations yeah. in india and that's how once you start selling buying players producing players then a lot of big clubs also would not want to spend Too close to buy a player, they would want to spend, in fact, in grassroots and develop yeah. their own players. This is the system we'll have to bring it in. Excellent. In fact, yeah, uh, down the line, you could also consider doing this, uh, Mr. Bhutia, a Baichung Bhutia Shield, where inter-school competition starts, and whoever wins gets a chance no, to give it to you. We 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 have that because uh, I have a Baichung Bhutia Cup in Chandigarh, which is there. Uh, we have a Baichung Bhutia tournament in Delhi. Uh, so uh, wherever our centers are mostly largely situated we have bangalore as well so this is important because a lot of uh, kids going into baichung putia's football schools uh, are also not great talented players but it's important for them to also build on to players they need to play tournaments so a lot of clubs don't take them or they don't get matches so through this uh, baichung putia cup we make sure that every kid that is going into our schools training schools get to compete and that is very important just not for football as well it's important for them to become a great personality beyond their uh, you know teenage thing because once you start going to business and you've played football and you've competed uh, and played tournaments and matches it really makes you very very strong mentally if you've been a footballer because you tend to know how to win and lose as a team and that is just not uh, football but it's going to help you in way of life excellent Excel, you very beautifully answered all of them. Can we take two more questions? Unless you are little restless. Yeah. So we'll we'll do two more questions. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I am unmuting Mr. Vineet. Uh, just a minute. Yes. Unmuted. Vineet, are you there? Yeah. This is my son Ara. He wanted to ask one question. Recently, he got yes, injured sir. while playing football, and now he has a rod in his leg. So, did you ever had such experience? How to avoid this and how to overcome this? 
I I Arav, I think I've had major injuries. I've been out for almost eight months doing my knee surgery and all that. Though I've not had uh, rot inside my legs, I've not broken my bones, but I've had ligament cartilage injuries. So it is part of the game. It is part of uh, a part of football. The most important thing for you, Arab, right now is to get your injury healed properly. Once it gets healed, you need to get a proper doctor. You need to get a good physio, and you need to get a good fitness trainer. So you need to start doing is. Get your injury right. Get that fitness trainer. Get your muscles strong. Don't start playing directly. I think there are steps to getting back from injury, uh, and this is the major part in India is that we don't have uh, good trainers and phys- uh, physios. Uh, you know who can get uh, who's also there, just not theoretically, but also practically on the ground to really guide you. That obviously is, is a big big challenge. But for you, I think right now is uh, a lot of players have gone through that. You know, a lot of players have gone through worse injuries than that. They've come back strong. They've broken their leg. We've seen a lot of uh, players where they've completely broken, put rod, come back and play strong. Uh, Aryan Ram Ramsey, I think, who played in Arsenal, is one of the biggest examples. Uh, and other players, I'm sure, a lot. But uh, make sure that don't rush. Recover. Uh, get your muscles right. Uh, get that physiotherapy done properly. And then slowly you will have to push it. Don't rush it. Uh, soon, because then that is going to really damage your entire career. Thank you, thank you, Aniji. Thank you, Arav. Uh, I'm unmuting uh, Sonia Agarwal ji. Sonia Agarwal ji, unmuted. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, yes, so um, uh, my name is Jee Agarwal. I'm from the Zone School. Yeah, and um, recent like. uh four years ago um i went to germany as part of like a trip to like you know uh, train uh, for football and uh when i went there i actually saw that the the way german coaches train um uh, the way german coaches make us train is much different than the indian coaches so i want to ask why is that so See, it it is fact that Germany, England, Italy, Spain is the biggest footballing nation in the world today. Player in Africa, player in South America, Brazil, Argentina, Cameroon, Nigeria, India, Iran, Iraq. Everybody wants to play in these four countries because where football yeah. is very very high, and they have some of the best coaches uh, there. And it is important in India. We need to have good coaches training program. i think we we've already started there's a licensing criteria for coaches now but itself is not not good enough so uh, i think the coaches will have to apart from getting license just like doctor tomorrow you become a doctor the mbbs doctor but that is that allows you to practice but to become a really outstanding doctor you'll have to do a lot of things on your own so i think with indian coaches as well getting the certificate is very very important that you get it but certificate alone is not going to make you very very good coach so for that you'll have to do research you'll have to see a training uh, yeah yeah it's fine thank fine. you thank you thank you, you last training program okay thank you and uh, i'm taking one last question aryaman mukherjee unmuted you aryaman mukherjee i've unmuted you good afternoon my father just spoke to you oh, yeah. so i just wanted to yes. ask a few more questions so uh, i was just asking that uh, firstly i mean i mean what's the scope of pursuing football abroad i mean in india i'm sure there's a huge amount of competition so in uh, in abroad so is it more less or like which is beneficial and easier because see football is not the same as cricket and cricket is much more popular in india as well so there's a high chance of getting into cricket but as have like chosen football so i wanted to ask about that i mean i think uh, you know if, if you can go abroad nothing like it the culture is different the training uh, so i can't hear you that you're not audible uh, mr boti you're not audible one hello yeah 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 better hello can you hear me yes 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 yeah. <coughs> hello what you need to do is i think uh, if you can go abroad nothing like this uh, that change for this 
uh, you know, the infrastructure, the culture, uh, it's definitely very different from what we have. You are not audible again. There's nothing yeah. wrong. Yeah, I mean, I can't hear you. That Your clearly. voice is cracking. Your voice is I, cracking. I hope the signal is not an issue. It must be because of signal only, I think, Jesse. Yeah. Uh, your mic is off, sir. Just a minute. I'll mute. Yeah, you are muted. I should have muted. I'm muted. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Better. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear? Yes, yes, yes. See, Bob. Well, I think if you can go abroad and train, nothing like it. <laughs> Got great culture, facilities are better, coaches would obviously be much better. But uh, also one disadvantage being abroad is that you know you don't get to compete in the recognized league abroad because that is for a youth program anywhere around the world. Even in India today, if I have, if you have to play under 13, under 17, I league, under 15, I league. You are a foreign national, you don't get to play. You're not registered and you're not allowed to play in those leagues, which is the highest league. The same way for if you go as a, uh, as a footballer to train and you are talented as well, you don't get to play in that highest league in that age group because you're a foreigner. But what you get to play, which obviously get to train, which is good to play. Uh, but at the same time, it also helps you, gives you option for a lot of other things to do. Uh, you know, you can, uh, you can get into fitness. Somebody I just spoke to. Sir, so you're... Voice is cracking too much. It's not clear at all. I guess. Okay, yeah. I think I'll. Can you can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can. Yeah, I can, I can. Is it better now? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Hello. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, going abroad gives you more opportunities. Uh, just not as a football player, but also on a fitness trainer to uh, football. Uh, you know. Uh, I just spoke to somebody who's doing management in football. So it gives you more option on that to connect to the sport. Because now with football, you've got huge uh, opportunity, just not as a player, but also in terms of. I, I think, Araman, you can directly call him up. His voice is not clearly on. Araman, you have his number? Yeah. Hey, uh, I if, if I'm not wrong, you, your dad knows him personally, he, right? Yeah, I have his number. So you can directly call him because I think his voice is not audible to all. Uh, so, uh, Mr. So, Bhupati, just one suggestion. So, uh, Where are you? Yes, yes, okay. yes, Uncle. I heard, I'll call him up. Yeah, good. Uh, Mr. Bhutti, are you there? So what we gonna do is uh, once yes. the corona gets over, better with the virus. I think next winter or summer next year, we're gonna do a nice. Uh, trip and a football summer or a winter coaching camp in Singapore. So you get all the guys who are here to come and uh, train uh, and also interact and also train with you. So we will do this 10 day or 7 to 10 day football training program with two matches around this area. So we'll do that. Again. So nice of you. In fact, uh, your signal is slightly poor, but what you said meant a lot to all of us. And we really liked your. Uh, Coming here and giving us so much of inputs into football, this one subject which actually has to grow and evolve and spread. And Mr. Bhutti, I think it's about time that you take it as take it from the front and make this particular game as the biggest game in India. And only you can do it, your name can do it. I think the schools all over India should have your academy association. I think your uh, this Bajun Bhutia Cup should be all over India. The competition between schools should be on that cup. You can bring up children up from there and actually have a bigger platform of uh, for football to become the sport for India. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you, friends. And Mr. Bhutia, thank you thank so you. much for being here. You've been a wonderful talker and you are so soft-spoken and so nice. Thank you. Thank you, Manoj. Thank, thank you, you, Ravi. Thank, thank you, Kavita. And thank you, Hemant. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.